you're not going to back me off from acknowledging the problems we have as a nation. Because if we don't acknowledge them, we can't fix them. To extend the Commission on Civil Rights to prevent discrimination in federally assisted programs, to establish a Commission on Equal Employment Opportunity, and for other purposes, from the document of the Civil Rights Act of 1964. As a young person, I am interested in discrimination policies and their effects in America. I want to understand what these policies are and how they work in schools, workplaces, and other environments. How these policies protect people of a different race, sexual orientation, etc. More specifically, the Civil Rights Act of 1964. Equality. 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 Equality is the main vocal point of the Civil Rights Act. This federal policy helps ensure the protection of equality no matter what race. It is important to do so to avoid harmful stereotypes, generalizations towards other races in different environments. By that, we can progress to a better future. The Civil Rights Act of 1964, first proposed by John F. Kennedy, then later on signed into law by his successor, the Civil Rights Act of 1964 was one of the most significant legislative victories of the civil rights movement, which abolished segregation in public places and outlawed employment discrimination based on race, color, religion, sex, or national origin. In relation to Title VII of the Civil Rights Act of 1964, which again prevents covered employers from discriminating against employees and prospective employees on the basis of race, color, religion, sex, national origin, sexual orientation, or gender identity, there are two types of discrimination that are generally brought forward in civil lawsuits. So the first is disparate treatment, and the second is disparate impact. Disparate treatment is intentional discrimination, while disparate impact is unintentional discrimination. Both are unlawful. Understanding the Civil Rights Act of 1964 is key to understanding how it affects me and my surrounding community. The Civil Rights Act of 1964 has accomplished many achievements for citizens, making it another reason why we should educate our communities and ourselves about this federal policy. No one should go to work fearful that they could lose their job because of who they are, how they identify, or who they love. Plain and simple. Now here is the real question, how does this policy affect me, a high school student, and the surrounding community? First, we can analyze how the Civil Rights Act of 1964 can apply to other environments other than workplaces. In the end, discrimination just doesn't hurt the individual. Rather, it can take an impact on the community. Hi, my name is Erin Wiesner McKinley, and I am a Deputy City Attorney for the City of Long Beach, California. To understand the impact the Civil Rights Act of 1964 had on discrimination in America, it's important to understand what the Civil Rights Act of 1964 was designed to do and what it does not do. Now, the Civil Rights Act of 1964 accomplishes some pretty significant things. It prohibited unequal application of voter registration requirements that were used to limit people of color's access to the voting polls. The Civil Rights Act of 1964 also ended the separate but equal segregation that had previously been upheld by the Supreme Court case Plessy v. Ferguson in 1896 um, that allowed for segregation in schools and public accommodations. And the Civil Rights Act of 1964 also worked toward ending discrimination in the workplace in both hiring and termination practices. Now, the Civil Rights Act of 64 did not outlaw discrimination between individual actors in private settings. Overall, the Civil Rights Act of 1964 is one of the most effective and reliable federal policy for all citizens who have faced injustices in the U.S. It would be great if we taught more in depth of the Civil Rights Act of 1964 to the younger generation, as they can learn to hopefully put a step forward to take serious action in the future. Okay, so what exactly does all of that mean? Um, essentially, it means that if an employer's policies, practices, or procedures are set up to intentionally eliminate a protected group under the act, this would be disparate treatment. An example of disparate treatment um, would be if only Latino applicants were required to take a pre-employment assessment test. An employer cannot intentionally single out or treat an individual in a protected group less favorably. Now, disparate impact is when an employer's policies or practices or procedures are unbiased but end in a disproportionate impact on a protected group. So going back to our pre-employment testing example, if an employer tested all applicants and only Latinos are eliminated based on the results of the assessment, this would be disparate impact discrimination, which is also unlawful under the act. Now thinking about discrimination through these two lenses can help employers identify and work to eliminate both intentional and unintentional discrimination in the workplace.
This federal policy can apply to everyone, not just one specific group. The polls from conducted surveys show us that there is definitely discrimination in America, and with the federal policy can help eliminate behaviors many minorities had to experience. But also to show principals and teachers and college presidents that these issues do still happen on our campuses, and not just issues of disability discrimination, racial discrimination, sexual assault, sexual harassment, gender discrimination, um, discrimination based on sexual orientation. These things do happen, and it's important to shed a light on it. Furthermore, this policy is important for people of different ethnicity, gender, or religion. This policy protects people who live in America and their rights, who truly deserve equality that has been fought for. For more than 50 years and even more, citizens still struggle with equal rights in America. This public policy is applied everywhere else in America. It is one of the civil rights legislations and is considered a benchmark in America. That is the Civil Rights Act of 1964. Thank you.